2023. Thank you for tuning in to your number one station for news and updates. I hope you're all doing good from wherever you're tuned in from. I'm your presenter, Abrahman Yusuf, and this is what we have in store for you tonight. Atmis troops pull out of key military base Middle Shabele region following Al Shabaab attack. Military court in Mogadishu sentences three traditional elders to five years in prison. Atmis reinforced with 15 new military staff officers. The court in Mogadishu has sentenced three traditional elders for cooperating with the Al Shabaab militants. The trio were arrested for defying a government directive that prohibited against cooperating with the Al Shabaab militants. Here is a full story. A military court in the capital has slapped three traditional elders with five years of imprisonment after they were found guilty of working with Al Shabaab an Al-Qaeda affiliated group. According to a statement, the trial were convicted of inking a collaboration agreement with Al-Shabaab leaders in central Somalia. The prosecutors accused Omar Mohamed Jamale, Ali Ahmed Hayle, and Sugal Warseme of traveling to Haradere, the then Al-Shabaab stronghold town in the Mudug region, where they held talks with Al-Shabaab commanders. Haradere is now under control of the Somali government after the military backed by clan militiary captured this town following Al-Shabaab withdrawal without resistance. The elders reportedly agreed to work with the group in plans to undermine the government offensives against Al-Shabaab. The Somali military court chairman, Hassan Ali Nur, has sentenced the elders to jail term. The court allowed the convicts to file an appeal against the sentence within 30 days. Burundi troops, part of the Africa peacekeeping mission in Somalia, have liberated the El Baraf, El Baraf rather, region in the Middle Shabele. Normalcy has since returned to the remote town after the Somali military, with the help of pro government clan militia groups known as the Maawisle, liberated the town. Atmi's troops have pulled out of key military base in Al Baraf, a remote town approximately 150 kilometers north of Mogadishu, after Al Shabaab fighters mounted a deadly attack on Burundi troops in May 2022 and took over the town. This small town was held by Al Shabaab fighters from May 2022, after the militant group overran this base of African Union peacekeepers but was liberated after three months by Somali military with the help of pro-government clan militia Mahawisle. Life is slowly going back to normalcy once again in the rural Hirshabele town of El Baraf after it was retaken from Al Shabaab by Somali military with the help of clan militia Mahawisle. Most of the residents of this town fled after Al Shabaab fighters destroyed water wells and threatened the locals who opted to remain behind. With security now guaranteed, Residents have returned to their homes and started up small businesses. The question here remains how long can the Somali National Army hold this strategic town? The Somali National Army remains poorly equipped and poorly funded. The recapture of this small town from Al Shabaab might have come as a relief to the residents, but many challenges still lie ahead. The derelict hospital building has since the liberation of the town started minimal operations, but lacks drugs. Patients seeking services in the hospital are forced to buy medication from Johar. Somali, I told Somali, had that electric to the Ravan, who may stay a couple of the Mirkag, the Maracay, and either in Kag, the Rima, Yokaka, Yoyo, Kalaki, Gala, Marco, Hobby, Maracay, and Tibus, who didn't coffee at the Galhomes, using Tibus, who didn't have a doctor, who made a lot of an artillery. Al Shabab remains capable of inflicting heavy losses. It killed five people last week in an attack on the office of the mayor of Mogadishu. It also mounted deadly attack on an African Union base here in Al Baraf, killing 30 Burundian soldiers last year. After being re-elected to the office for the second term, President Hassan Sheikh Mohamud is desperate to show Al Shabaab is driven back, but the country is a long way from being secure. Reporting for Dalsan TV, I am Abdel Zakali. Fifteen newly deployed military officers for the ATMIS group have concluded a week-long induction on the range of mission standard operating procedures. Here is a full story. Fifteen newly deployed military staff officers for the African Union Transition Mission in Somalia, ATMIS, 
have concluded a week-long induction on the range of mission standard operating procedures. At the opening ceremony on Monday, the Acting Atmos Force Commander, Brigadier General Peter Omala, briefed the officials on the status of the transition process and urged them to diligently implement the mission's mandate. The mandatory induction is designed to educate the officers on the mission's code of conduct and the operational environment, among others. The Atmos Military Chief of Staff, Brigadier General Kindu Gezu, said the induction had given them a better perspective of the mission's mandate and also enabled them to appreciate the concept of operations in relation to the timelines for the final drawdown of Atmos. Atmos Chief Military Personnel, Colonel Bassi al Sese from Sierra Leone, like the other participants, said the induction had been insightful. Warrant Officer Abu Grey Letisha, who has served in the Ghana Armed Forces as a clerk for 20 years, described the training as refreshing. Facilitators for the training included officials from United Nations Support Mission in Somalia, United Nations Mine Action Service, and Atmos Military Police and Civilian Components. Media watchdog Somali Journalist Syndicate has expressed its concern over the recent judicial harassment and arbitrary rather arbitrary detention that's intended to silence journalists in Somaliland and Mogadishu. The organization called out on authorities to free two Som News TV journalists who are currently under police custody. The Somali Journalist Syndicate is concerned by the recent threats including judicial harassment and arbitrary detention intended to silence local journalists in Somaliland and in Mogadishu as they called on authorities in Hargeisa to free two SOM News TV journalists currently in custody. On January 26, 2023, the Sanag Regional Court sentenced Horial 24 TV reporter Abdirahman Mohamed Adani with nine months of imprisonment and 900,000 Somaliland shillings, fined for covering a story they exposed a Somaliland military officer who closed down the only available mother and child health center in Filukle a rural village in southern Sanag region which reportedly led to a death of young expectant, expectant mother in October last year. A second journalist, Jabir Said Duale, who covered the story for Som News TV, was also sentenced to 600,000 Somali shillings. The pair were detained on 17 October 2022 but were freed on bail on the same day. The court freed a third journalist, Abdelazak Haji Ahmed, who reports for the state-owned Somaliland National TV, who was also held for the same case. That's all we had prepared for you, our lovely viewers. I wish to thank the Dalsan team for making this bulletin a success. I'm Abdurrahman Yusuf telling you, have yourself a blessed.